Hey everyone, welcome to the first Kickstarted. So, today I want to, and I'm going to try and do this every month, go through and talk about various Kickstarters that we have here. I'm going to be looking down some, as that is where my screen is. If you are not familiar with Malts and Meeples, I am Petter, I run Nerdologists, as well as the Malts and Meeples site, and the 10 Minute Marvel podcast. I'm a big board game fan and the Molten Meeples channel is for solo board gaming as well as uh, just board gaming in general as we'll see as we go through these different save Kickstarters. If you enjoy this please give me, consider giving us a follow on Twitch or we're also on YouTube where I'll be uploading this video later. Um, you can find us there at Molson Meeples. Consider subscribing to us there as well. So I decided it'd be fun to go through and talk about some of the Kickstarters that I have been interested in. Um, this is a little bit tricky because I don't know precisely what I look like right now up here, so if you'll bear with me one second. I don't have a two monitor set up, set up yet, which I really need to. Alright, that doesn't look bad. So that's all good. Let's hop into these nine Kickstarters that I currently have saved. You can see the furthest one out is ending in 30 days. So I'm a little bit surprised this one, first one here, isn't funded. The reason I'm surprised is people love roll and write games. That's one of the most popular uh, categories of gaming right now with games like Welcome to, Second Chance, um, Cat Cafe is a new one, there's Welcome to Dino World, uh, so many, so many different roll and write games. It's impressive and here we have something that has 10 different roll and write games in it by 11 different designers. All of them, uh, you can get it print and play. That's actually the level that I'm debating about because if I can print them off, which is a big question because right now printer sucks and I don't feel like buying yet another printer. It seems like it's almost a better deal to just buy a new printer and throw the old one away than it is to buy ink at some point in time. That might just be me, but I've had terrible luck with printers. But the, with the print and play version, I can print it off. I have a laminator. I could go ahead and do that. It is cheaper than getting a physical copy of the book and then either having to cut out a page and copy it and laminate it. So if I get it, I'm leaning towards that. And it's interesting because it does have 10 different uh, roll and write games. You can see perforated pages, different rules, have your different tier levels, um, 16 piece die set. I don't, I have so many dice I would not consider getting the die set. Though they do look fairly cool, not like that. So we have a few different games here. So we have a scrapyard robot. I don't know how it works. It doesn't look that exciting. Little Island Gift Shop could be interesting, but yeah, that's what keeps me on the fence with this one is a lot of the roll and rights don't look that interesting. I mean, look at this one. That's just very plain black and white. Pennsylvania. This one at least has a little bit more going on with it. Uh, Cooper Cowboys. Again, could be great, but that's a whole lot of... I can't tell what it's about just by looking at it. Um, flowers over Towers. Now that one actually, I like the looks of that one. That's uh, something that looks unique, which is cool. Island of Atlantis, though, we get back to a very 
plain and boring looking uh, setup. Granted, that is more than we get with Celestial Stories. Apparently you're weaving stars together, but that's just a grid. It's not something that that's, is that unique. And Lost at Sea, that one seems to have, uh, seems to be more interesting to me. It definitely has some reviews, though we have one, two, three from the same guy. And it could be good, but like I said, it's, it's on the list because it's a roll and write, and I've had a lot of fun with those recently, and I've had good luck getting those to the table recently, but mm, we'll see. That one's four days left. If it does well, if it does get funded, and people like it, I can definitely see this not being that expensive to then get published and mass marketed. So I might hold out and wait on this one. Aeon's Trespass Odyssey is about the opposite you can get of uh, Roll and Write that has been compared to Kingdom Death Monster, which is a massive kind of uh, tactical combat with role playing thrown in altogether. You can see that this is doing extremely well. I'm pointing at my screen, which will do no good for you. Uh, 818,000 out of the $50,000 goal, and the, like a $50,000 goal is not necessarily that cheap. The downside is, so, $1 will get, if I remember correctly, does get you access to the pledge manager, which is something that a lot of people do, is they'll get access to the pledge manager, and then once they're in, they will pledge. And I realize I probably have people who are fairly familiar with Kickstarter, but if you're not familiar with Kickstarter, I'm just going to do a few of these every once in a while kind of explain my thoughts as I'm going along. So 69 bucks for the introductory campaign. So that's just the Prelude content, I believe. Prelude introductory set. I think that comes with some of the minis and cards and tiles and tokens and whatnot. But you're not getting cycles one through three. That's 130 bucks. I mean, it's 200 hours of campaign play. That is a lot of gameplay. Um, it's one to four players, so for someone who like me who's been solo gaming some more, it's a good option. Um, it's, I mean, 200 hours of gameplay, that's a year or two easy of gameplay. Uh, that's more than Gloomhaven, if I'm not mistaken. Even though I'm playing with a group of completionists, so we're really trying and pushing out our hours on Gloomhaven, which has been a lot of fun. And, obviously, just a ton of great looking minis there, or not so minis there. But, with that price and not being as familiar with the company who's making it, this is probably going to be one of those wait and see. I can definitely see them doing a 1.5, uh, like they did for Kingdom Death, Death Monster when that was released, or even Gloomhaven, which had a second printing that they did through Kickstarter, which is actually when I got mine. Uh, I can see them doing that just because this is one of those games that's so big, and it's making 818000 but that's not actually that large a total for a game like this. Um, I want to say Tainted Grail was about six million, which is a huge number. Etherfields was slightly below, I think, and Gloomhaven was, I mean, probably is eight or nine bil million, not billion, that'd be a lot, eight or nine million over the two Kickstarters at most. So if this is a good game and they get into people's hands and it starts getting rated and reviewed on Board Game Geek, I can definitely see them 
doing a second Kickstarter to really bump up the amount of uh, copies out there. But yeah, it's it has some interesting. Ooh, excuse me. It has some interesting looking uh, cards. I like the artwork on it. It's. I just don't know enough about it, and I really do not like this uh, grid. I get that they wanted to keep it plain and generic, and that they can have the monster on it anywhere and just kind of add in terrain elements or whatever but that's just I don't know I don't love the brown tones on there and just doesn't stand out on the table especially if you aren't painting the minis which I wouldn't be so at best, I'm going to spray paint them, and I most likely do uh, like a light gray or a bronze, which would not stand out against this. Same with this Triskelions. I They just don't look that great. It, the game itself looks very interesting, but yeah. And then it's 300 bucks for all five cycles, 300 hours of gameplay. That is, that's a ridiculously large amount of content. And I mean, just look at what you get. This is just the Prelude introductory set. And I feel like the Prelude introductory set is an okay deal. I can see this maybe going for 90 retail. So that's 20 bucks off at most. I mean, it has the eight figures or seven figures, but they're really trying to get you to bump that up to the 129 level. Daily unlocks, those are always fun. Ton of stuff. Stretch goals, other types of stretch goals. Yeah, so much on here. So much. I have no idea what that is. And then there are add ons. Like the Gardens of Babylon. Oh my goodness, that looks amazing. That uh, circular, spherical one. That's a work in progress, but. I mean, that's a hundred dollar add-on, which seems about right. Then another hundred dollar add-on, and a ten dollar add-on. Crossover with Madara. The second set of all the figures, I mean, you could there could be so much that you add on to this like I think Kingdom Death Monster the all-in was about 700, 750 sorry I'm just gonna check one thing quick nobody's chatting uh, this is where I need my second monitor I have it just haven't set it up yet um, yeah, like that's disgusting, but kind of cool. That one I like a lot. That one is very cool. But yeah, we'll see. I think, I'm sure the all in for this, which they'll probably do something with that in the pledge manager, will be 500. 550 which is so much and like I think I've spent 200 on a Kickstarter before and that was Tainted Grail and that was all in gameplay plus 
some metal coins just because I thought they looked better than the plastic. But man, it's... Kickstarter can be big business. Let's hop over to this next one. Uh, this one is not actually a game. This one just allows you to up your game. So it's all sorts of custom little pieces uh, for different games, different things. You can see they, they're trying to cover up what they're on a little bit so you can't recognize it as easily, or at least I can't. But this is what I'm really looking at when I look at this stuff is the coins. Those metal coins would be cool, especially so something like Machi Koro, even though these have that old look to them. For Machi Koro, I think something new and shinier will look better, but instead of cardboard chits, that would be uh, great. Or even this for something like Small World. Just give it a little bit more heft and a little bit more fun uh, that way. So yeah, you have a bunch of different options. It's just, it's one that always seems interesting and eventually I'm sure I'll upgrade a game of some sort. Uh, hearts are nice too for health or like, uh, I don't think they actually have brains in this one, but those work really well with any of the Arkham Horror uh, games since you're always working with that. But, yeah, I was looking at these different price groups to see what there were, or look at the packs of coins, since that's the better deal. It's, it's something you consider doing once you have a whole bunch of games that you're enjoying, you're playing, and you maybe don't want to get a new game right away, but you want to get more enjoyment, say, out of the games that you already have you can upgrade your game with something like that. This one is very tempting to me because it is actually built as a one player game. Um, it's one to two. It's very much, um, you don't have to control two characters as one person to play this game. Um, I like the Pseudo, pseudo Norse theme and kind of that magical world that you have with it. Uh, 30 hours of gameplay is. Excuse me. 30 hours of gameplay is a lot, and however many hours of sleep I got last night was clearly not enough. But I like the map. Um, Rolling Solo did a video of this. Uh, for the Kickstarter, and it seemed like fun gameplay. So the big mechanic for the gameplay is this bag building system where you add in like your attacks and defense, and you can kind of customize it as you go, and you add in more chips. Uh, depends on what like weaponry or armor you have, and so that's really cool. Uh, that's something that. I haven't seen in a game before, and well, I shouldn't say that. Um, Arkham, ugh, English hard, Arkham Horror Living Card Game does a bag building system as well, which basically is your modifier to whatever you're trying to do, and you can kind of customize the difficulty based off of that. This is more of a true random uh, draw sort of thing. You have your different characters and their gear. You have their upgrade tracks, which is cool. You have like different maps. You have your different storybooks. So I think this is the main rule book in the middle there. But then you have four different pairs of characters and you have a story to go through with each of them. And I realize that we're getting a nice reflection right there. I don't have any lights on in here. Because I was like, yeah, this actually shines on my face decently well. Don't get weird shadows. Yeah, this game is going to recreate things 
like the video game Skyrim, or replace old video game RPGs in a tabletop fashion. That is cool. And some things like this games trays, custom insert. Games trays inserts are nice. They make storing the game away so easy. And this double layer uh, character boards, enemy boards, man, that is a lot of nice things, nice add-ons for it. It's tempting me. I'll have to see. This might be a wait and see one. Um, man, they have unlocked. Oh, what is that? That is pretty looking. I mean, ugly, monstrous, I should say, but pretty. So much has been unlocked. Those game trays, yeah. And it was a lot of fun to watch. If you're interested in this, I highly recommend the Rolling Solo video. It was a lot of fun to watch it in there. And he used the app, um, which is an additional cost to the game. I don't think it's necessary for the game, but it's definitely something you could consider. Instead of having to read it, you can listen to it and you can hear a sample there. And yeah, like I said, the bag building system that allows you to determine what you can do uh, when you fight monsters. Yeah. You can see I'm not even halfway down this page. We're just going to fly by. We have our app here. Music. So much. Let's fly back up here quick. So 94 bucks for the game, plus I guess that's with the uh, app. So 80 bucks for the game and un all unlock stretch goals actually seems like a pretty good deal for this one. And they've created five. Let's just see what they've created. Otherwise, I'm not familiar with them. Spherian Guard. Stonebound Saga, Visions of Telios, so same world, Stonebound Saga, Land of Zion, looks like that was uh, what Stonebound Saga was originally, but this must have succeeded. I'm actually curious to see uh, the Stonebound Saga, so Board Game Geek. Let's look this up. I'm curious, I don't know. Uh, i gonna sign in. If you want to follow me or see what I have, you can do that. Stonebound Saga 7.7. .7. Not bad. Not a huge number of ratings, but you can click on this. Tens, nines. It's kind of nice not to see much of this because so the lower numbers, the one, two, three, and four, a lot of the times those ratings come from if a Kickstarter is handled poorly or yeah, something. Uh, yeah, it's just handled, it has less to do with the game and more to do with how something was handled around the game. So it's nice to see they're potentially a good company for that. This is, this is high on my list. The issue is that there's also another Kickstarter coming in October, which is high on my list as well and can't necessarily always get all the Kickstarters you might want. So let's come back here. So I actually own this game already. Uh, Detective Cities City of Angels. It is a 19... I forget what... 1940s LA pulp 
detective game um, with all the detectives competing against each other. Plus then there is this person called the Chisel who is basically running the game, handing out the clues and stuff like that when their different characters are interrogated. And yeah, like other people can bribe for information. You can, if you think the Chisel didn't give you the right information or there might be important information that they're withholding, you can kind of lean on them a little bit but it seems like a really fun game. The base game comes with nine cases. Well, I think eight plus a introductory case that is supposed to go a little bit faster. So it's one that I definitely want to get to the table. Um, I'm not too worried about kickstarting it, actually. So Van Ryder Games that uh, did this has done a fair number of other things, you can see. Uh, but I wanted to show this one off because it seems like it it seems like a very fun game, and I really enjoy, like, uh, deductive. I could not come up with that word for a second. I wanted to say detective, but deductive games. Um, and I really enjoy that style of game. And this one, the fact that it feels like it should be one against all, but you're all detectives. The all are detectives who are trying to make the name for themselves is very cool. So four new cases in that. Oh, the Carnival of Souls. That just sounds wonderful. Oh, that sounds so creepy. That's what I love. Yeah, so there's all sorts of things you can do. You have all these different locations that you can travel between. You have the main game, and they were actually sold out of Bullets Over Hollywood at Gen Con by the time I picked up my copy of the main game, but I was just glad they weren't sold out of the main one. So if you, if you enjoy a good deductive game, this seems like a very interesting and unique one. It is possible to play solo, with kind of the um, suspects following scripts when you uh, interrogate them, but it really does seem like it's probably a better group game than a solo game. Next, uh, this is not board game related, but it's cool D&D &D related stuff. The idea of just these little cards that tell you what you need to know for monsters, that seems like a lot of fun. Just being able to whip that out instead of having to flip through a book. Print and play is 12 bucks, definitely something i consider. It says 15, so let me clarify, 15 Canadian, 12 US. I think that's Canadian, that must be Canadian. So all sorts of things, easy to use, important stats are big, you have your special actions, you have your regular actions, it allows you to kind of immediately give them quirks or names, stuff like that, definitely helps, and bigger than tarot cards, which is really cool. You can see how big they are, and you can see all the different monsters. This is definitely one that I would consider print and play, because I just need, oh man though, look at that artwork, that is cool artwork. That makes it very tempting to grab, but uh, it's very cool looking and I forgot to look at the very top. It is so close to its goal, it will easily make it. Um, I don't know if they have stretch goals, but if they do, they will hit them. This is, yeah, this I think will finish 10,000, 12,000. So, definitely grow so. So this one, you can see, is 0% pledged, 0% funded, 22 days to go. What the heck? This one isn't live yet. This is an upcoming project by Lucky Duck Games. 
uh, with, I believe, Monolith Arena. And I got to look a little bit at the uh, preview page for it, but let's uh, go over back to Board Game Geek. And I have it right here. So it's a story driven, competitive exploration kind of dungeon crawl type game. This is set in their world of their Joan of Arc game, which their Joan of Arc game is a big little miniatures game. It, so, like, the miniatures are very small. I don't know if they're actually that small, but they're very small. Um, but then you have giant dragons that would be probably as tall as my head in there because they wanted to keep stuff more towards scale. And the Joan of Arc game is kind of, I think, the bad guys versus the good guys on the table, on a board, sort of thing, kind of tactical combat, uh, rolling... I'm assuming rolling dice, I haven't actually, well, we have die rolling as a mechanic on this one, so I'm assuming it is for the other one as well, but what really interests me is the theme, so it is, this one is set in the same world as the Joan of Arc one, and the Joan of Arc one had, well, it's historically based, let's put it that way, you can, you're probably like, wait, wait, you said dragons, it's historically based off of the stories of those times. So there were people who reported that there was a giant dragon. There aren't giant dragons now, so yeah, they might have been, uh, had a little bit too much to drink or something like that, who knows. But all of the things that they use in the game are stuff that has been reported, like werewolves or vampires, stuff like that. And so you have that fantastical element, but it's still tied into history, which is a very cool, unique thing. And so I'm very curious to see what this one looks like. And hey, it launches tomorrow, so day too early to uh, show the page to you. I'm assuming, I'm assuming that the base game is going to be about a hundred bucks, maybe 120 seems to be about the price that a lot of these miniature uh, board game type things are going for right now. Then we have Godspeed by Pandasaurus Games. So Pandasaurus did Dinosaur Island. That is their big one. And this is an alternate 1960s space race. I actually don't remember why I put this one on the list. Besides, I mean, that looks fairly cool. I think it was, it, so this is one of the games that has been talked about a bunch. It's not necessarily my cup of tea type game. I, yeah, this, I guess right now I don't know why I put this on here. I think, I'm sure I would enjoy it, but yeah, this is not a game that I'll probably back. Again, not because it doesn't look good. I think it looks very interesting. But, uh, it's just, yeah, it's not the type of game that draws me on Kickstarter. I like the, I do like the artwork, though. And then finally, we have Wicked Fountain, or Wicked Foundations, Tales of Terror, Miniatures. So if you want Nightmare Fuel for your D&D game, this is where it's at. So you can get a bestiary. You can get horrifying miniatures. I think I mainly just put this one on here it's because these are creepy as all get out. And I fully appreciate stuff like that. Um, I'd be more tempted, 
Well, I'm most tempted to get the cheapest one here, actually, the $15 softbound copy of the monsters, basically. I'm This is going to give you some additional 5th edition monsters to work with, with, which would be a lot of fun. But uh, I don't have a drink with me today, but that wraps up this first ever uh, Kickstarter edition of this. I just want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Invisible glass, bottoms up.